Ken Hover, the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, so you know this is my hometown. I'm from New Orleans. My office is just a couple of blocks away. And so I've been here since early Saturday morning and I always look forward to seeing Ken. Can't find Ken, but I can find replicas of Ken <laughs> all over the exhibit hall. So this was my only opportunity to take a picture with Ken at this convention. Now, so when I was a very when I attended my first convention, I was a young man. I was scared, nervous, and they drugged me into this committee meeting. And I sat down at this committee meeting, and I'm looking at name tags, and I'm sitting between uh, Chuck Salmon and Ed Nawi, okay? And Chuck Salmon, he wrote my concrete textbook. Oh my God, it's Chuck Salmon and Ed Nawi. And they said, come, come over here, young man, come sit with us. And I was so inspired to be sitting with these giants, these icons. And I thought, this is incredible. Now, what happened at So um, they said, you haven't met anyone yet. Chuck Salmon, Ed Nawi, nothing there. You need to meet Ken Hover. Who's Ken Hover? I never heard of Ken Hover. He's fantastic. He's, he's so enjoyable. He's, he's like a little fantasy. And I said, you mean like a gnome or a fairy? And they said, no, 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 no. He's nothing like that. He's bigger than that. He's iconic. He's memorable. But he's hard to find. I said, you mean like the Loch Ness Monster? <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. He's nothing like the Loch Ness Monster. There's, there's lots and lots of photographs of him. You can find him. And I said, but what does he look like? They said, oh, he's big. He, he's, 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 he's the man. I said, you mean like Bigfoot? And he said, no, 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 no. He's not like Bigfoot. He's, he's, he's so much more. He's enjoyable. He's knowledgeable. I said, you mean like a unicorn? They said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. He's a giant. I said, oh, OK. So then I had the pleasure of actually meeting the giant of the industry. Now, I had met him in passing here and there in the halls, and I was introduced to him. Hi, I'm Bill. Hi, I'm Ken Hofer. Nice to meet you. Glad to see you. But I was a nobody, OK? Then I became somebody, right? I, I was elected as vice president, and I attended my first executive committee meeting. OK, so you come into this room, and I'm sitting there. And there's President Jim White, Vice President Ann Ellis, Ron Berg, and Ken Hover. Okay? Now, at this point, Ken Hover is past president. Okay? So he's a has been. Okay? Now, Bill Tolley once told me, because when I was when I was leaving the board of direction. Six months before I actually finished my term, I get a letter from Bill Tolley that says, thank you for your service to ACI. And it's like, Bill, what the hell? I'm still on the board. I'm already off. And he, I, 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 I'm a has-been. And he said in the words of Bill Tolley, to be a has-been, you must have been. So Ken has been. <laughs> now, I love these. We talked about the faces. Uh, I think it was Fred talked about the faces of uh, Ken Hover. So here's some of my faces of Ken Hover. This is the I love you, man. This is the I love you, man face. This one is, you know I'm right. Don't even dispute. Don't argue. And then one of my other favorites, who educated these people? Okay? So this picture I actually found. Uh, I think you were, you were on TV or being interviewed uh, somewhere. And this just, I'm sure he didn't say this, but this is the face of, Oh, God. I can't believe they actually said that. And then, call me Mr. President. Okay? That's the Ken we all kind of know. But that was in the past. Where is he now? Is he relevant? Okay? <laughs> he already knows where this is going. So, <laughs> is he relevant? So every Tuesday morning, if you want to see a grand event, Tuesday morning, 7 a.m., every convention is the meeting of the has-beens and the irrelevance. Okay? That is the group of past presidents. The has-beens and irrelevance. Right, past presidents? Now, 
Um, Ken realized very early on in his past presidency that he had lost relevancy and it was diminishing. So Ken came up with a formula that determines a past president's relevancy after they finish their term. So the relevancy is the inverse of your years removed squared. Okay, so what does that look like? It looks like this, okay? So, you know, this is uh, Tony Nanny on Wednesday. Um, this is his highest relevance right here. And you can see year two, three, four, how many years has it been, Ken? We can count, I think you're somewhere down here. I'm right behind you somewhere in here. Uh, so Ken's relevancy is diminished and I'm about the same. We, we can't even measure quite that low to our relevancy. Now, um, also, we have introduced a term to the past presidents. This is not a term of vulgarity. Uh, you can look this up right out of the dictionary. Uh, functus officio. Uh, Jeff Coleman, if you know, is a lawyer. It's a legal term, so Jeff introduced us to Ken uh, being functus officio, actually all of us. Latin for having fulfilled the function, discharged the office, accomplished the purpose, and therefore of no further force or authority. Applied to an officer whose term has expired, has consequently no authority, no instrument, power, agency, has fulfilled the purpose of its creation, and therefore of no further virtue or effect. Amen. Amen, he says. Okay, so um, here he goes into retirement. Um, I'm sure this is him sitting at home, huh, Deb? Now, Ken is not only a teacher. Um, <laughs> he's also a student, okay? And probably many of you, how many know that Ken is a student of the Civil War, loves everything about the Civil War. Here in the South, we call it the War of Northern Aggression. Oh, yeah, okay. Some of you laugh. Now, um, going a little further, um, since we have a lot of academics in here, uh, if I show the next slides, I'm going to get uh, criticized for plagiarism. So I'm citing my sources right now as coming. The next set of slides is from a Ken Hover presentation. Okay? Now, um, he's already... So this is General P.G.T. Beauregard, uh, Napoleon of the South, a Confederate general. Uh, he, he fought at Fort Sumter. He was a New Orleans native. These are Ken Hover's slides. Now, um, when we talk about Ken in the Civil War, um, he's one of the few people that know this fact. I, I'm an LSU graduate, an LSU Tiger. How many people know that LSU Tiger, the mascot, is not named after an animal? It's not named after a tiger. Anybody know that? So Ken had bestowed upon me a gift the Louisiana Tigers were actually a regiment from Louisiana during the Confederacy. By some accounts, vicious fighters. By other accounts, murderers, rapists, wrath, uh, just scoundrels. Okay? But Ken sent this to me as a gift. These are replicas of Louisiana Tigers, and they have a memorable place on my uh, bookshelf. So, I thought that was pretty cool, and so then... As you're going off the board as a past president, there is a tradition that you're allowed to give a PowerPoint presentation to the board or a, a going away presentation. Of course, Ken had a classic presentation. This was part of it, and I was incoming president. And so he started comparing me to PGT Beauregard, talking about PGT Beauregard. He was a civil engineer. All of these things. Now, I'm a little embarrassed by this until still to this day, he calls me general. So on Saturday, we're at a meeting. He walks in. He goes, General Rushing, how are you, sir? Okay, a little embarrassing. Now, at that, he talked about PGT Beauregard, his signature cap. So Ken again presented me with another replica of PGT Beauregard's replica cap, also on my shelf. Love that cap. And I started thinking, this was a Ken slide, okay? Now, I started thinking about this, 
And as I started doing research on PGT Beauregard, as you dig deep, apparently his men hated him. His subordinates wanted to kill him. And I kept thinking, is Ken sending me a message somehow? <laughs> and so I looked at greater generals than PGT Beauregard, and I thought, Ulysses S. Grant, much bigger general than PGT Beauregard. Conspicuous gallantry on the field of battle in the most difficult of times, inspiring to those, awesome to those he opposed. Even if you oppose Ken, he's going to do it pretty delicately to you. He's not going to call you stupid to your face, but he might make you feel a little stupid. Ever present at the scene of action, always look to at times of need, always has your back, defends friends and foes alike at the end of the Civil War. Um, Grant was, entire, was incredibly gracious to the, the losing Confederacy, allowing them to keep possessions for their farms, etc. Certainly that speaks to Ken, always visible to friend and foe. Now, so for me, I thought this is the greatest opportunity for me. Ken gave me a hat. Grant has this iconic hat. Okay, so I went looking for the hat. I had to find the hat. I'm going to get him a U.S. Grant hat. So I started Googling, and they're hard to find, but I found one. $479. I said, Ken, I love you. I don't love you that much, brother. I really don't. And when I talked to my wife, Sheila, about it, she said my budget was $400, so I was 79, so I couldn't get you the hat. I'm very, very sorry. I have no hat for you, but... Um, Threw me under the bus, did he? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, she didn't give me a budget. So what I, what I did get you is a replica, just like you did for me, of General U.S. Grant. And, um, you know, your friendship has meant the most to me. Um, I have always uh, enjoyed your friendship, your leadership, like all of us here, and I am so honored to have known you and worked with you.